Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. My name is Silky Feather, and you can call me Silky. Meet Kevin has a statement here, and it was released not too long ago. Did Trump really just order a $3,400 stimulus checks? Let's take a listen. Hey everyone, Meet Kevin here. Oh my gosh, the amount of clickbait on YouTube today about this $3,400 stimulus check has absolutely been insane. I didn't even mention it in my stimulus video this morning because I thought it was so blatantly clickbaity, but I may as well address it because there, there, there's so many rumors about this, we just gotta clear the air, so here we go. Okay, to really understand this, here are the tweets. This is the big one. I've directed Steve Mnuchin to get ready to send direct payments, $3,400 for a family of four, to all Americans. Democrats are holding this up. This is leading a lot of people to say, oh my gosh, that's right, he wants everybody to get a check. But if we take that tweet and put it into context of the other tweets, which were sent at the same approximately minute, uh, I, I saw these live when they happened and I just discarded them, not because, it, you know, I'm not trying to say I like Trump or I don't like Trump, but it's because I, I know what he's doing. But anyway, you know, in context, he says, I'm ready to have the U.S. Treasury and SBA send additional PPP money. Democrats are holding this up. I'm ready to send more money to states and local governments, for teachers and so on. Democrats are holding this up. And then they got a little meme here of Chuck Schumer going, I object. All this is, is political posturing. It's trying to bully the Democrats. I don't think we can say and take out of context what this is, again, bullying Democrats, and say, oh my gosh, he said all Americans. Does this mean the income thresholds aren't going to stay? And we're going to pause for a small commercial. I have ordered myself a matching set. This is absolutely darling. Darling, darling. From Makari. The link will be down below from this seller. Her mask. This is... this. Is the cutest set, yeah. To me, gotta get it behind my ear so I can. Is this not the shit? She is so talented. She has so many styles, so many colors, and she does do custom, um like custom orders I do believe and you get a little pouch for your mask so you can throw it in your handbag and you know what I did with mine there's a slot in here for those um, square filters well this slid in all the way and now that was like a four ply and it wasn't like over hot or over heavy so link will be down below I'm sorry we'll get back to the to the news. Dun dun da Okay, it was over the top. Had to. And she's not paying me. <laughs> or giving me anything free. Hey, does this mean we're getting thirty four hundred dollar checks? No. Thirty four hundred dollars, all it is, is taking the Heels Act and the Heroes Act and the twelve hundred dollars that Democrats and Republicans agree on and the five hundred dollars for dependents and emerging those. So let's say a mom and a dad, or a dad and a dad, or mom and mom, whatever, that together is together, $2,400, 1200 and $1,200, $2,400, plus 500 per child, boom, boom, that's $3,400. Which is how much money I received, because I have two children, and I'm married to Lauren. When the stimulus checks first came out, I received $3,400. In case you're wondering why I received a stimulus check, you can watch Lauren's video on that. I'll link it down below, or I'll put it up here. We explain, well, Lauren explains entirely. I guess I'm in that too. So we both explain why I received the stimulus check, which I ended up donating. Uh, but in, in other words, these tweets, when you take them in context, and I watched his press conference yesterday and today afterwards, which we'll talk about the one today, then you know that Donald Trump really didn't do anything. He didn't direct the Treasury Secretary to do anything. This is just stuff that we've heard recycled over and over again for the past four weeks. In fact, Donald Trump is now using Democrat talking points himself. Remember, Nancy Pelosi for months has literally used the quote, we want to put money into the people's pockets. This was word for word the words she has used for months. We want to put money into the people's pockets. In Donald Trump's press conference today, he said, I want to put money into the people's hands. So I guess in order not to plagiarize Nancy Pelosi's line, he changed the last word from pockets to hands. Okay. 
no shade here because honestly it's a popular thing to say i just had to mention it i mean that's an easy one to point out anyway th these tweets are what they are they're just pressure to bully democrats and i get it like there are hundreds of clickbait videos on this today this whole 3400 dollars thing it's just fugazi and that's terrible though uh, let's focus on the real update here and this is much cooler two and a half hours after i posted my video this morning breaking down this sort of uh, some good news topic about the problem solvers caucus really going to try to come up with a real deal for the president and the leadership to look at uh, well, after I made the video breaking down what they're doing this morning, uh, CNBC picked up the story. That was two and a half hours after I posted my video. So that's pretty cool. So CNBC, if you're out there watching, make sure to tell Jim Cramer I'm coming for his job. Anyway, Donald Trump during his press conference today was asked directly why he doesn't just call up Democrats and have a meeting at the White House. To this, Donald Trump said, well, the economy is doing very good right now. He pointed out how well things are going in like auto production and manufacturing. And he said, when the deal is right, that's when I'll meet. I can live very happily, and we can live very happy, happily with or without a bill. But I want to put money into people's hands. Think about that for a moment. Donald Trump said, he'll meet when the deal is right. This is very interesting because it puts the burden on Congress again, but Congress is on vacation, right? Or they're on recess, it's a technical term. They're campaigning or whatever it is they're doing. But a large caucus, you know, 24 by 24, Republican and Democratic members, are working together to come up with a deal that they can bring to Donald Trump. So we do actually know that this caucus is making progress in potentially making a deal come together, and they would do exactly what Donald Trump is asking. If they get a deal together, they'll bring it to Trump. Trump just said, he's open to it, bring it to me when you're ready. Kind of interesting. Starting to connect some dots here. So to me, I don't want to say that this is like entirely helpful. But I, I think this is where a solution is potentially brewing. And I kind of look at this as like there's a little ember and a fire you're trying to start. Oh, oh. And it's time to kind of just start like shielding it from wind and maybe blowing a little bit of life into it. You know, keep that fire going, so to speak. Get it, get it to grow. Uh, also, many of you have been asking in the comments about what, what the heck is all this drama going on with the post office? And Donald Trump again doubled down on this in his press conference today. Here's just basically the skinny on the post office. Okay, the person in charge of the post office was replaced last month with somebody who wants to increase efficiency at the post office. Donald Trump says the post office has been heavily mismanaged. Well, the person Donald Trump picked also apparently was a large campaign donor to Donald Trump and is somebody who's friendly to Donald Trump. Hey, no, I guess that comes with the privilege of being president. Uh, the first action that this person took, the new postmaster general, have been to reduce overtime hours, because overtime is time and a half billing, right? That's expensive for a company, I get that. Uh, but they're also banning extra trips to customers to ensure timely deliveries. So, like, if the package is late, a post carrier might do a quick trip to the post office and then deliver the package that same day to make sure it meets that sort of timely delivery. Well, it looks like overtime and sort of these extra trips are being cut out. So some mail is just going to arrive later. Also, about 10% of the USPS, the post office, mail sorting machines have been decommissioned, mostly in high population areas. This is really turning a lot of heads because these 671 machines have the capacity together of sorting 21.4 million pieces of mail per hour. All of that will now be done by hand instead. The post office is saying it can't guarantee that all ballots cast by mail will arrive on time to be counted without their machine. The new Postmaster General says these delays are just unintended consequences of his plan to instill efficiency and discipline as they prepare for election season. The Postmaster General also says these sorting machines were removed because they're mostly designed for flat envelopes, and they want to use that floor space within the Postal Service to prioritize box delivery, like Amazon boxes, think last mile distribution, since, well, envelopes just aren't that common anymore. Well, keep this in mind, though. Election ballots come in envelopes, and they come in flat mail packages, not boxes. So there's kind of your skinny on what's going on at the post office, and obviously Democrats are seeking more funding for the post office. He's tried to provide more resources to the post office. And Donald Trump says he's okay with more funding for the post office. No, he's, he's just not. not okay with Democrats holding up all these other sources of funding in order to institute mass mail-in voting campaigns and give money to state and local governments, which he believes are poorly managed. 
and give Oregon as an example. Do you think? He already stated. Kevin, I'm going to bash heads with you on this. Trump stated they are not going to get the money that they wanted. And it's because he believes there's fraud in Malin voting because if he loses an election by mail-in voting, he wouldn't believe it. He would truly believe that it was all fraudulent. But if we all go to the polls or what have you, and he still voted out of the House, all the defunding of the post office is going to do is make a lot of post people angry. The men and the women and then their families that depend on them to put food on the table. Not only have you lied about children and catching this virus, this is serious and I wish you would take it seriously. Portland is a disaster, and he wants to send the National Guard in to clean up. And he's sort of using Oregon as an example of a state that's failing and a state that does not deserve bailout money, uh, even despite the pandemic. Now, uh, in COVID news, we have a little bit of a slap in the face to parents. Child care costs are increasing from more tutoring expenses, daycare expenses, babysitting costs, in part due to the massive demand for private help in families now as many kids are stuck home from school but still want to be educated their parents want their kids to be educated costs are also rising at preschools as preschools have to spend more money on cleaning and protective equipment so this is kind of creating this double whammy for parents where if they have their kids at home with tutoring they're spending more money or they have help at home they're spending more money and when it comes to preschool they're spending more money on politicians and child care democratic presidential candidate joe biden recently proposed free free kindergarten for three and four year olds and tax credit to help with these child care costs. Republicans propose $15 billion in funding for the child care industry. Of course, neither of these are close to happening because even if Biden gets elected, we won't actually see a Biden presidency begin until the end of January 2021. Furthermore, on COVID cases, in the last two weeks, we have seen a downward trend in the amount of testing being conducted. Previously, we thought we'd be able to get to 2 million tests conducted per day, but for the last two weeks, the amount of testing conducted has actually hit a low. We are now down to 709,000 tests per day. I thought the it was 100, amount of 700 in a month. It's about to pass out. Moment. Some say that this is happening because people are frustrated with long lines. Others say the nation hasn't built a good enough system to actually reduce lines and speed up test results. What's sad is, well, we're six months into this pandemic and we still can't get realistic testing done. Where's Lori Laughlin to help us skip the testing when you need her? Anyway, remember, testing helps people quarantine and helps us track where outbreaks are. Some say that it's possible we just have fewer cases in general and so less people are getting tested because of that. Others say there's too much pandemic fatigue and less people care to get tested. This does, though, come at the same time as a state like Texas is suffering from a 24% positivity rate. And I don't mean like people have positive attitudes. I mean, people in Texas who are getting tested, 24% of them are testing positive. That's Ouch. insane. That is a high ratio. It means if you're in that testing line, one in four are sick. Kind of almost sounds like a bad place to potentially go. Uh, anyway, you obviously get tested. I'm not suggesting that you should not get tested. Just I'd probably go with a mask. Anyway. Thank you for stopping by and seeing what I'm up to. We, we, let's go back, Jack. <laughs> we, what happened? What is going on there? That was crazy light. We. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by. My name is Silky Feather. I enjoyed um, this. I was excited. This message was good. I know I got a little bit of a rant going on. I don't like Trump. I've never liked Trump. I never liked him before he became president. And if anybody knows anything about me, one thing is, is if I don't like you, it doesn't matter if you become the Pope. I'm still not going to like you. Okay? 
my mom and I, she walked out of my life. She abandoned me, so I don't like my mother. And if my mom became president, I'm going to go, oh, my mom's president. No, who cares? You know? Goodbye, mom. Have a great life. Enjoy it. Because I'm going to enjoy mine. I won't forget to put the link in down below for Makari. She's a rocking uh, seamstress. I love it. Bye, everybody. Enjoy yourself. Please do like, subscribe, and stay safe. Share it. Hey, I'm back already. I'm doing one better for you. Here's her, uh, what she has up right now. And this is Makari, and it's an app on the phone or the computer. Her name is Maria Dot, and I'm not even... Jin and Net. I can't say it. I'm going to say it all wrong. So, G-I-A-N-N-E-T-T-A. -T -T Looks like there's a period in between that, her first name and last name. But she has 30 reviews. Looks like she's got a five-star reviews. And she's also on Love Sparkles on Etsy. But she's so, I mean... This is the set that I got, and I absolutely love it. And it's super comfortable. It's really worth the money. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Bye!